Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover 2024 here at the Venetian. We are kicking off day three of theCUBE's live three-day coverage. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host and co-analyst, Dave Vellante. Day three, already. I'm not going to talk, I'm just going to save my voice. Okay, all right, because we've got a good guest. We've got a good, a, a Cube alum, Rocco La Vista, Vice President, Worldwide Sales and Go-To-Market Leader for HPE GreenLake at HP. Welcome back. Great to see you again. Thanks for having me back. This is always my favorite part of HPE Discover, spending some time with the Cube guests, uh, hosts, and then uh, just getting the vibe check from everything else that's going on. Well, awesome. we, we need a vibe check from you. I mean, you're the go-to-market leader. What, what are you hearing right now? What, what, what are the for, conversations? First of all, by far, Look, 13 years at HP, this is the best Discover we've ever had. The excitement by our customers, the excitement by our partners, even some of the interviews that you guys are having, this by far best vibe I've ever seen and re-energized our company, our customers, and everything we're doing is being reinforced by the votes that we're getting in the market right now. Love it. I think I've been to, I bet you I've been to more than 15 Discovers when you include um, the previous the, versions. The pre, you know, HP Discover, and then HP Discover, and the ones overseas. Oh, yeah. London, Frankfurt, Barcelona. Barcelona, Madrid, and I agree with you, by far. I also tell you this, I've probably been, Rebecca, close to 300 live keynotes since 2010. By far, the best experience I've ever seen in the sphere. I don't know how you're going to top it next well, year. I, I feel bad for marketing, because they're in a <laughs> yeah. panic right now, like what are we going to do next year? Yeah. But, so I'm glad that they're starting already, <laughs> so yeah. we'll see. So what's new? What's, what's, the, what, what's the focus Let's, for you this week? Again, everything about HPE GreenLake, how we're helping customers solve their most complex business problems right now. The customers continue to vote with their wallet based on the growth that we see in HPE GreenLake, um, the, the new solutions that we're releasing within HPE GreenLake. This week we announced HPE Private Cloud uh, for AI, getting tremendous feedback from our customers. So really excited about that, and that is a main focus for us right now with our partnership in NVIDIA. So I got to ask you about what's happening in the, the virtualization world generally, VMware specifically, for the, for the audience that maybe hasn't been following it closely, Broadcom bought VMware for $69 billion, and they're now doing basically exactly what they said they were going to do. They're going to narrow the focus. They're going to focus on the top couple of thousand customers. They're going to stop the ELAs, the ELAs Enterprise License Agreement, where you basically say, all you can eat, no problem. Broadcom's saying, we're going to reel that in, and we're going to charge for the whole thing, one SKU. So we're not going to sell vSAN separately from NSX, none of that anymore. Focus, we're going to invest, <clears throat> and we're going to raise prices. This is exactly what's happening. So there's all these other peripheral applications that don't need all that stuff. They don't need the full stack. So what are you hearing from customers? How are they dealing with this and how are you helping them optimize their virtualization estate? Yeah, and uh, right, right now the number one feedback we're getting from customers is help me, right? Help me, help me navigate what's going on with, in the market across the various virtualization stacks that are out there, especially what's going on with VMware via Broadcom. And bless them for Broadcom simplifying and saying what they were going to do and doing what they said they're going to do. But right now we have to help derive value out of all the changes that are going on in the marketplace. And we boiled it down to three basic principles for us at HPE. First is optimize, we've talked about that. Um, how we're going to help them optimize is through cl cloud physics, a free assessment, we can took, take a look at their virtualized estate. Customers have massive virtual machine sprawl, right? They have abandoned virtual machines they're getting no value out of. They have vCenters all over the place. And so with what we do with cloud physics and our professional services capabilities, we can optimize their existing estate so that they're not over-provisioning on licenses. That's the first thing we're doing. Second, we're also helping them with our private cloud solutions where the virtualization stack is included in that. And everything we do with our private cloud offers and everything we do in HPE GreenLake is cloud economics. So if they need to burst up in their hardware, the virtualization comes with it, and when they don't need that excess capacity, they can scale back down. Again, a key tenement of how we're delivering our private cloud solutions. After that, it's about you know, 
it's, it's, it's about diversifying or giving them options across the right workload in the right virtualization stack based on you know, what the expectation is for the customers. Look, what we do at HPE is we have a strong ecosystem of partners. Whether it's Nutanix, whether it's Microsoft, whether it's even HPE's new virtualization capabilities we announced this week. Um, we're helping customers every day figure out what they should do based on the workload profile, the data set, and maybe look at alternative virtualization stacks integrated in our platform that'll make it easy for them to consume and go forward. And then of course, after you've optimized, after you've helped simplify kind of like, or given them choice of what they want to consume in that virtualization stack, then we can help them simplify their IT operations. When we bought OpsRamp a year ago, it was one of the happiest days of my life to buy such a capability around ITOM and now ITOM capabilities are, are delivered as part of every GreenLake deal that we do. Customers are getting ITOM capabilities inherent inside of GreenLake, whether it's a private cloud solution or it's GreenLake custom solution. We can deliver AI insights across their hybrid IT estate and we're the only ones that can do that right now. And so real, like, when we announced we were doing that, I knew exactly where we were going with the strategy, and it's a great one. So a lot of a lot of options, or a lot of a lot of capabilities in there. I want to say a couple things. One is just the optimizing the licenses. I think is really important because when you have a situation where there's a high degree of lock-in and the vendor has pricing power, you don't want orphan licenses. So example. Oracle database licenses. You don't want stranded Oracle licenses. It's a huge waste of money, and it's expensive. CRM, Salesforce, same thing. You don't want to, you don't want to pay for licenses that you're not using. So you got to start there. That makes a lot of sense. Being able to flex with the infrastructure is key. What are the options that customers face? They can, uh, or with for their, what I call, no offense, but craplications. There's Hyper-V. There's you guys got your own virtualization stack. Uh, there, there's KVM, uh, there, there's, there's OpenStack if you want to go there, you, there's, there's Nutanix, there's options out there. Help us understand those options and, and, and how you help people decide. Well, look, we're, we're, we're all working with our customers and meeting where they're, where they're at, mm -hmm. right? So that's a first step is, you know, you have a lot of other strategic partners that are out there that paint a picture of a vision, but you don't get that vision until you go there. Mm -hmm. First step, we have to meet customers where they're at, right? What are their containerized, what's their containerized platform and applications they have today? That doesn't need virtualization. Work within the OpenShift and Kubernetes environment natively. Eliminate that virtualization stack, optimize right there. If they're doing Windows-based or Microsoft applications, those happen to run really well in you know, a Hyper-V or Windows environment. We're helping customers optimize that way. And so, you know, one of the things that, that's great about what we do with HP GreenLake, and to the benefit of our partners, and to the benefit of our customers, you have stranded software licenses out there. That is the worst thing for a software vendor to have, and it's also the worst thing for a customer. With the GreenLake platform, with our methodology, with our customer success teams, we're driving the consumption of the full stack. Every month, we're analyzing their capacity, we're letting them know when they have excess, how to utilize that capacity more efficiently. So for our ecosystem of ISVs out there, when they sell a solution with us, they also get the optimization, the consumption, driving techniques and methodologies we have in partnership with our customers, make sure they're getting the maximum value of that solution. So, within HPE GreenLake, I find that to be the, the most beneficial way for our partners and our customers to consume solutions. Yeah, so we're, Rebecca, we're starting to see a better alignment with things like software pricing and even okay. now hardware pricing. And I think you know, the cloud consumption model sort of got us thinking about that and now it's really moving up the stack into SaaS and obviously the virtualization stack. Exactly, so I, from what I'm hearing, you're really working hand in glove with your customers, as you said, meeting customers where they're at. So can you talk about some of the new virtualization offerings this week that were announced and how they're really going to address these pain points that customers have. And, and I love how you said their, their, their number one 
question to you is help me. Help me, yeah. So first, the virtualization capabilities released this uh, week are around our private cloud offers. So it will not be a standalone offer, it's got to be kind of consumed in our private cloud offers. Why? Because we're fully lifecycle managing the platform for them. If you talk to any customer, today, even today, they struggle with lifecycle managing. The infrastructure, the firmware, the patching that goes on, the OS levels, the virtualization stack, they're always out of sync. By consuming our virtualization capabilities with our infrastructure, and in some cases, the application itself, we're fully managing the lifecycle of the full platform for them. So we've simplified day zero, day one, day two operations for them. Straight out. That's why the best place to, and why we're saying HP virtualization capabilities must be in our private cloud offers because we can maintain the consistency, the control, the security that customers would expect and the insights that they want from consuming a platform from that without worrying about each little ingredient that's in there. You know, in 2000, I want to say 2009, I was talking to Paul Moritz, who was the then CEO of VMware, and he used the term, he said, we're building a software mainframe. And I was like, well, the marketing people, <laughs> wait, wait till they get a hold of that one, and of course they killed it. But the point was, we're going to be able to run any application, any workload, you know, anywhere. And they essentially did that without a lot of you know, virtualization overhead penalty, so sort of like a mainframe. Now, uh, here's the thing, mainframes are still around. Why are mainframes still around? Because it it's, doesn't make sense, it doesn't make business sense to migrate your mission critical stuff off of mainframes, but the stuff that shouldn't be on mainframes because it's too expensive, migrated a long time ago. So the way I see it, Rocco, and I wonder if you could comment, is the core stuff you're not going to mess with. But all the other stuff you know, around it, the, the applications where you just need good enough, move those. How complicated is it to migrate those applications? I know it's really complicated to touch the mission critical stuff, because you got to freeze the code, there's all these dependencies in the business process. Don't mess with that, you're going to screw up your business. But all the other stuff, you know, if you, if you mess that up, it really doesn't affect your business. How do you see the migration? How complicated is it and how can you guys help? Yeah, and, and thanks for that reminder because the migration is the last step mm -hmm. in terms of after you've optimized, after you've like diversified and looked at and simplified kind of your operations, you now need to migrate those workloads. And again, another acquisition we made in Zerto, that technology simplifies for customers the ability to migrate those virtual machines from VMware to public cloud, and in the future across various virtualization stacks so that customers can be agnostic to the virtualization stack if they're using Zerto to manage how and what they migrate when, and then on top of it, you want to put backup and recovery using Zerto, you want to build your cyber vault on it as you're moving these VMs around. All those capabilities are inherent in how we deliver Zerto as a service for our customers. Interesting, I, I, I didn't make that connection. So it's data movement, and it's data protection, it's, it's the vault, so you can have a, maybe an air gap if you need it. So what you, you, you said, hey, for the other stuff, I say, no, use Zerto for your mission critical applications, uh, because then you have the protection of being able to move those virtual machines anywhere should you have an incident inside or on premise, you can move them to a public cloud to give you that diversification if so needed. But you can then also take those virtual machines and the data and everything, put them in a vault, cyber resiliency vault from Zerto, so that you can recover from that. And when you recover from that, maybe you recover to your on-premise, or you have to recover to some other stack that you have, whether it's in the public cloud or another site, that might not be what the original source was. Zerto helps customers diversify without worrying, thinking about, not only about migration, but backup and recovery, inclusive of cyber. That's, that's a, an opportunity for you and for HP and Zerto, irrespective of Broadcom's change in strategy, because really that's not, that's not VMware's wheelhouse, you know, that kind of you know, data right. protection. They got 
as you do. You, they got partnerships with a lot of other data protection and data management companies, so. Rocco, this is a real moment here. I mean, we, we started off this conversation with you saying this is the best HPE Discover you've ever been to. I know you were at HPE earlier in your career, you worked at a couple other tech companies, yeah. now you're boomeranged back to HPE. I wonder if you could just talk a little bit, of, just reflect on this moment in terms of what Dave always calls the AI heard around the world that, that launched in, in November of 2022, and, and what we're seeing now in terms of the innovation, in terms of the energy and excitement here at HPE. Yeah, and I'm going to go back to a point I made earlier. Look, the world is hot on AI, and we're there, and we're a forefront leader in everything we're doing, the vision we have, the solutions we're partnering with NVIDIA and others on to deliver to our customers. That's where the puck is going, if you will, and let's not make any sports analogies to New York or Boston teams in that <laughs> way, but, but that's where the puck is going. But it's only 10% of what customers are dealing with right now. I mean, 90% of what is on their mind is still running the apps, running the business that they have today, optimizing the operations that they have, dealing with you know, some market conditions, and a disruptor is what they're doing with virtualization. And at the end of the day, that's what our focus in is, helping customers where they are today, getting them ready for the future with AI, helping them with solutions that they easily can consume with the HPE GreenLake Cloud as the best form of that that I can provide a customer. And, and the AI applies to the, the, the ops ramp piece oh. as well. I mean, AI inside of that, that automated operations is a huge with, win. With, without a doubt, with ops ramp and, and ITOM capabilities delivered or powered for GreenLake Flex and private cloud solutions, when that AI engine gets spun up with all of these connected tissues of infrastructure out there, AI is going to, the ops ramp AI is going to get better and better helping customers optimize those operations, help them be more resilient, help them be more highly available. So I'm, I'm excited about everything we're doing in that way. Well, and here's the thing is right now when you look at what folks are doing with Gen AI, they're all trying to figure it oh. out. You know, they're doing very chatty types of applications and they're stealing from other budgets to do that. Um, but when you apply AI to automated IT operations, that's a win, of course. right? Because you're just basically making things more reliable, you're allowing humans to do more strategic things, so, so that's instant ROI, whereas you know, the ROI on Gen AI and the enterprise right now is still a little fuzzy, so that's, that's a really key point. And then of course, bring in AI for, for networking with Juniper and Mist, that's a whole nother vector, which we'll be talking about next year at, at Discovery. I think we're going to have a whole nother set of conversations that are going to make generative AI more real with more examples in the enterprise, because what we've announced this week is going to simplify for customers the consumption of that technology, and we've got a great services organization that's going to filter out the noise for customers because they're getting hit with lots and lots of use cases. And if you pick the right, wrong use case up front, guess what, every other AI project you do from there will be doubted. And so we need to be very selective of how we help customers, make sure the right ROI is there, and that will come from our services organization with the platform capabilities we're delivering with the private cloud for AI. Well, you've perfectly teed up next year's HPE Discover, so we look forward to having you back on the show it's then, be Rocco. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. Always sure. a pleasure. Thanks, guys. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover. Keep it right here on theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.